Hello guys, you're welcome to today's tutorial and in today's video we're going to be looking at the C panel, right? So before we continue, we'd like to welcome each and everyone to our YouTube channel, Webit Media. If you're new to this channel, kindly hit the red subscribe button, turn on notification bell so you get notified once you drop a new video. And um, also do not forget to like each and every video that you do watch, drop a comment in the comment section of the videos. If you have questions or you have suggestions, I will going to be in the comment section to reply to each and every of your suggestions and also your comments. And also if you find each and every video educative and informative enough, Try to share this video to your friends and people you know this video is going to be of good value too, right? So um, with that being said, we're going to go straight into our training. And remember, on Webit Media, we make videos around making money online and also how you can start up your own online business. So if you're thinking of making money online or you're thinking of starting up your own online business, Webit Media is the fastest way or the fastest channel you can come to to learn each and every of these secrets and also each and every of these methods so with that being said we're going to go straight to this training and like i said before we're going to be looking at the c panel this panel now in our last video we talked about buying a domain name and hosting and now uh, we talked about how you can purchase a domain name the different domain registrars what domain names and hosting plans are we talked about all those things and before we ended the video we talked about the C panel and we said we're going to be making a fresh video to explain each and everything you need to know about the C panel so in today's video we are going to be looking at the C panel and the second thing we're going to be looking at in today's video are the major things that can be found in the C panel so we're going to be giving a quick explanation of what the C panel is how you can access your C panel who provides you the entrance or the login details for you to have access to the C panel and also we're going to be looking at the major things that we can find in the C panel why is it called a C panel what are the things that are found in the C panel that are can make up the C panel. We're going to be looking at each and every of those things in today's video. And remember, you are on Webit Media, and if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, kindly hit the red subscribe button and subscribe now. Also, turn on the notification bell. So, what is the C panel? The C panel, also called the control panel, is a web hosting control panel software developed by C panel LLC. It provides a graphical interface and automation tools designed to simplify the process of hosting a website to the website owner or the end user. It enables administration through a standard web browser using a 3 3 hour structure. Now, what this simply means is that the cPanel is simply the control panel of a website, right? It's an administrative block or administrative area by which a website is being controlled, right? So the cPanel is simply called the control panel of a website. It's where every of the you know um um, um duties that is being performed by the website is being you know controlled from right the admin of the website has access to the C panel to control the website so we're going to be looking at quick things that we can find in the C panel according to our number two content the major things that we can find in the C panel right that makes it to be called a control panel or a control room of a website right so now how do you actually have access to this C panel that we're talking about now after purchasing your domain name and hosting right from your hosting service or your domain registrar there are some domain companies that do not sell hosting why there are some that sells both domain and also hosting right so after you have purchased your domain name and also your hosting plan your hosting company it could be the one you bought your domain name from or it could be the one you just bought your hosting company from meaning you can purchase your domain name from one company from one host uh, from one uh, domain registrar and purchase your hosting from another right but if you have to purchase the two of them in the same place after buying your domain name and also your hosting you're going to receive the details on your email that you use to create your account or stuff and they're going to send you your cpanel login details now your hosting company is the one who sends these details to you because your hosting uh, uh, company or the hosting agency is in charge of your cPanel. They actually give you the login details or create the cPanel for you and send you your login details for you to be able to access the cPanel and do all of your administrative work, right? So in today's video, I'm going to be using one of the websites that I have built. Uh, our company, Webit Web um, Technologies, has built to actually be explaining each and everything about this cPanel. Right, so this is one of my websites here, Portex Solution. I built, built um recently this year. You can see uh this website details was sent to me around June first, right? So this was the period by which we actually purchased this particular you know um domain name and hosting plan, right? So you can see here your website details for portexsolution.com. Now in our last video, remember we used Namecheap to actually purchase the domain name and hosting, and we said Namecheap is one of the best registrars in which you can use to purchase your domain name and hosting. And also we dropped our um, referral link in the description of the last video saying if you want to actually purchase a domain name and hosting, you should actually use Namecheap so you can get a price slash and also um, um, I could also get a little discount from each and every of your purchases, 
because I'm actually your referrer. But in today's video, we are going to be using the website details provided to us by QServers.net. This is the only um domain and hosting that I can actually lay my hands on right now. So I'm going to be using this to explain each and everything about the cPanel. Now, the good thing about each and every of these things is that the same type of settings this um um QServers cPanel might have is the same thing that also other registrars will also have right is the same thing the same um, um component so i'm going to be using this one to actually explain everything you need to know about the cpanel right so web space details for portexsolution.com remember how i told you you're going to receive this message is when you purchase your domain name and hosting your hosting company is going to automatically send you a message on your gmail containing these details your web space details this message comes in in less than two minutes after you purchase your domain name and hosting sometimes it may take a little while like up to five minutes or so but whatever time it takes just hold on you are going to definitely receive each and every of your details right so if you scroll through this message you're going to be seeing um everything the, the, the this message contains and here once you scroll down you are going to see new account info and you can see the cpanel um, login details here, right? So you can see the name of the website, portexsolution.com, and also the username and the password of this particular cPanel, right? So you can also see it here saying once your domain has been propagated, this is your login and all of that. So you can see the logins here is also the same thing as the ones here, meaning you can use this or use this right here. Now, how do you log into your cPanel? It's very simple. For you to log into your cPanel, all you need to do is go over to your browser, type in the name of your website. Type in the name of your website.com slash cpanel. This is the way by which you can actually log in to your cpanel. The name of your website and the extension slash cpanel is the way by which you can log into your cpanel. And all you need to do is hit the enter button and you are being redirected to the cpanel login area. The second method you can use to log into your cpanel is through um, 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 this method here. Is either you come over to your Gmail and access the cpanel through the cpanel and slash cpanel now this first method is actually very simple because if you know your cpanel login details the username and password you don't need to always come into your gmail to find your web space details and also access it through the web space that takes longer while if you know your cpanel username and password stored in your head all you need to do is go back to your browser anytime you want to access your cpanel type in your domain name slash cpanel and enter in your password and username but if you are the type that do not know your password and username and you need to always check before you use all you need to do is come over to your gmail and also access it through that method so we're going to go over to the cpanel um, um, um login login area right now you can see the page is still loading and once it's done loading they're going to redirect you to your login area right so remember your domain name slash cpanel for you to have access to your cpanel account Okay, so here you can see we are currently on our cPanel login area. You can see username and also the password has been entered because I actually saved this straight up to my computer, right? So if it's not saved, all you need to do is come over here and copy. Make sure you copy word to word without minting any of the letters or any of the numbers, right? So you're just going to copy this, come over to your cPanel login area and paste. Right, so once you're done with that, you all you need to do is click on login. So immediately you click on login, you can see login successful. If your password and username is correct, login successful, and I'm going to redirect you into your cPanel account. So remember, I said your cPanel is the control panel or the control room of your website. Right, is the control panel or the control room of your website. Everything that has to doing with your website being in existence happens here on your cPanel. So your cPanel login details are supposed to only be known by you or the administrators of that particular website it's not a details you can easily and actually share out to everybody no it's your online property right so your cpanel login details is something you need to protect with all um security measures and everything make sure it's well secured on your laptop and everybody do not have access to it at all time except from people who you know would actually need that for let's say website have time to view the website and you contract the job out to somebody else right the person might need your cpanel login details and you can actually provide it to that person but if it's somebody you trust you can just say okay have the details and you do not have to change it later but if it's not somebody you actually know and you do not actually trust after having handed the details over to the person and the person is done with the job all you need to do is change your password and also your username oh sorry your password 
you change your password and uh, uh, so the person do not have access to the account at all times, right? So you can actually do all of that here on the cPanel. So I'm going to be taking you through some of the most important things you need to know um, on the cPanel, right? I may not be looking at everything, but I'm just going to show you the most important things we need to know here on the cPanel. On your own, you can make a research and study about other things. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at here is the email account. Email account. What is this used for? It's used to create webmails. Webmails are also called um, um, emails. They are also called emails or they just look like emails. The same way you have a Gmail and email is the same way you also have a webmail. And what's the function of webmail? To actually send mails, right? As the name implies, email accounts is used to send mails. Now, how do these mails come out? Like, what is the format of this mail? Are they same thing with um, um, at gmail.com? No. The same way Gmail have their own um server email has their own the same thing with webmails webmails have the, their own ways in which they function and how do we webmail actually look like what is the structure of a webmail is something like this support at example.com now i'm sure many of us have seen something like this several times sorry support at example.com i'm sure we have seen something like this every time maybe on bam out but they actually come out in this form and each and every of these things are being created here on the webmail in our second video we're going to be explaining everything about email accounts and all of that right so the next thing we're going to be looking at here is what we call forwarders what this said gmail account meaning you can link your gmail account down to your webmail so that whenever an email is being sent or a gmail is being sent or a mail is being sent to your um your normal webmail account that is used for your website and you are not online or to you don't not have access to that particular webmail at that particular time all messages being forwarded to your webmail are being sent down to your normal email or gmail account the one you provide here on the forwarder right so that's the duty of the forwarder to forward all mails coming to your webmail down to your normal gmail or email right so the next thing we have is autoresponders what is this is so as name replies autoresponders it is used to respond every mail that you know uh it's an automatic responder used to respond every mail that comes into your webmail you may be sometimes you might not be online or you might not be on seat to actually read that mail that just dropped into your um webmail so you set up an auto responder so that whenever a message drops in an auto responder or an auto message actually drops to the the person sending the mail telling the person okay this person you can contact since we are not available at the moment or stuff right so this is the duty of the auto responder so the next thing we're going to be looking at here on the webmail is all called file manager now this um option here is used to manage all your files on your cpanel right so when you want to um, import files or do anything files anything that has to do with files they are being managed here on the file manager on the cpanel so scrolling down the next thing we're going to be looking at is um we're going to be looking at let's encrypt ssl now this is used for security in terms of um, website security now there are some things you see on websites okay let's say we are using this you can see a padlock here like a key lock here beside my domain name now this showing that this website is actually secured if it's showing unlocked if the past the the um the padlock here or the security lock here is showing unlocked like it's not locked like this it means that this website is not secured and how do you know a website is not secured number one when this password this um key lock here is opened and the second way is when um um uh, uh your your website domain do not have https now http Now, you can see all of these websites here. When I type in HTTPS dot, each and every of these websites have been secured because of this security um, sign we have here, HTTPS. Whenever you see a website that has HTTPS, it means that website is secured. And whenever you see a website that do not have HTTPS, just HTTP dot whatever, it means that website is not secured and it's very, very dangerous to access that website or upload your um, payment details or any important details on that particular website it means that website is not secured whenever you do not have https it means the website is not secured and whenever you do not see this padlock sign locked it means that website is not secured we're going to be making a video to explain each and everything you need to know about the let's encrypt ssl right so the next thing we're going to be looking at here 
is what we call the software Oculus Apps Installer. Now, we, we there are some websites that have been built with WordPress and all of that. Everything has been done on the software Oculus Apps Installer, right? So when you want to build a website with WordPress, Joomla, and all of that, you come over to software Oculus Apps Installer to do each and every of Okay, so that's all about the software Oculus Apps Installer. And also the next thing we're going to be looking at is password and security. Now we talked about changing your password if somebody has illegal access to your cPanel in a, uh, when we started the video. Now you can actually do that here on your cPanel using password and security. You want to change your password and you do not want people to have access to the former password. All you need to do is come over here, impute the former password, enter in your new password and change the password automatically so these are the major things that we have on the cpanel and if you want to have more understanding about the cpanel all you need to do is go over to the web browser and study each and every of these things here as time is going on we're going to be making more videos to explain each and every of the things here on the cpanel but for the most important things we need to get our website running we have email accounts we have forwarders we have autoresponders we have um the files manager files manager and also scrolling down we also have um, um uh, we talked about less encrypt ssl very very important um for a website we also talked about here the password and security and also one of the most important things um the softaculous apps installer the softaculous apps installer right so um remember we said before you can actually get your cPanel login details, you must have actually purchased your domain name and also your hosting plan. So whenever you buy your domain name and hosting plan, your, your hosting company is going to be sending you your cPanel login details straight up to your Gmail. If you buy your domain name and your hosting plan and you do not get your cPanel login details, you need to contact your hosting company and they are going to provide those details to you. Now, there may be some times that you might actually have purchased your domain name and hosting and you have gotten your cPanel login details and yet, the cPanel is refusing to log in. You're having issues logging to the cPanel. Now it's simple. You do not have to panic or fear. It means that your website um, is still propagating. The domain name is still propagating and the hosting plan is not ready for you to log in. So all you need to do is wait for a few times, 30 minutes to one hour and try again. And if you're still having issues logging in, all you need to do is contact your hosting company. It's nothing wrong with your website. But if you're having any serial, serious dis um, difficulties logging into the cPanel, all you need to simply do is contact the hosting company and they're going to help you out with that, right? So remember, number one, purchase your domain and hosting. And after you're done, you get your cPanel login details. This cPanel login details is sent to you by your hosting company. So once you receive it, you're going to see something like your WordPress details for so 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 dot com, your domain name dot com. So once you receive those details, the simplest way to log in is your domain name slash cPanel. Once you type that on your web browser, put in your username and password, you have automatic access into your cPanel dashboard, right? So with that being said, we are going to be uh, um, um, making a new video very soon to explain each and everything about um, um, email accounts, right? So there we're going to be studying what email accounts are in clear terms and also the forwarders and autoresponders, all of that, right? So remember, if you are still watching this video and you have not yet subscribed to the channel, Come back here, hit the red subscribe button, turn on notification bell so you get notified once you drop a new video. Drop a comment in the comment section of this video and we'll be here to answer each and every of your questions. See you in our next video. Thank you.